Hello and welcome back. Till today, we covered a lot of basics. From now onwards, we will deep dive into Spark. Today, we will see how to read CSV files. Reading CSV files is not so important. The importance is we will understand how Spark works in the background with the help of Spark UI. We will also see how to handle bad records and we will understand the read modes available with Spark, which are permissive, drop malform, and fail fast. Now, I am in my JupyterLab environment. As usual, we will start by generating our Spark session. Let's run the cells. Okay, our Spark session is generated. Now, let's check our Spark UI. Our Spark UI is present in port number 4040. Let's refresh our localhost 4040. Awesome, our Spark UI is up and live. You can see there are multiple tabs in the top of the Spark UI. We'll try to explore majority of them today when we run through our code. Let's go back to our JupyterLab environment. Now, I have two CSV files available with me, the EMP new.csv and EMP CSV. Let's open the EMP CSV file. As you can see, we have multiple columns in this file, which includes employee ID, department ID, name, age, gender, salary, and hire date. So, we'll try to read first the EMP CSV file. To read a CSV file into a data frame, let's write our code. We will name the data frame as TF. To read a file, you need to write it as spark dot read dot now we will put the format as csv so we'll write format which is csv and to load the file we'll write dot load and we will give the location of the file which is data set data slash input slash emp dot csv now before i run this command we know this is a transformation we know the difference between a transformation and an action the actions are something which creates a job in Spark. But reading the data is not an action. So if I trigger this code, nothing should happen, right? Let me trigger this one. Okay, this code successfully run. Let's go back to our Spark UI and refresh our job tab. Wait, what? Spark created a job. But why? Let's go back to our Jupyter Lab and see what are the columns that Spark read. We'll put df dot print schema. Okay, Spark identifies seven columns. So we can understand the job which was triggered was to identify the metadata. Let's go into the job. You can see there is only one stage. Now, if we expand that stage, we can see there is only one task that is executed. And that task read only one record. This is what Spark did proactively to identify the metadata. Because Spark cannot optimize the read or the functions what you're going to write later if it is not able to identify the metadata. This is why Spark proactively ran one job just to identify the metadata. Okay. Now, we have only one job here. Let's go back and try to see. Spark identified the metadata, but not the headers. Now, how do we ask Spark to read the headers? To do that, we will ask Spark to use option, which is header. We'll put it as true. Now, if we run this, again, go back and refresh. Okay, only one job. If we go into the job, one stage. And if we go into the stage, only one task. Again, one record. Now, if we go back and refresh our print schema, awesome, Spark read all the seven columns. And again, the column names as well. Now, if you see the column data types, everything is string. Now, if you want to get the data type from the data itself, so Spark will do that for you as well. So we'll put one more option, which is infer schema. We'll put it as true. Now, what this infer schema does is, it asks Spark to go back and look into some of the records of that file and identify the data type for each of the column. So if we run this now, we go back to our job tab and we refresh. You see, now there are two jobs created. Okay, why two now? If we go to the first job, if we expand the stage and we go into the task, we see Spark only read the first record. Spark read this record to identify the headers. Now, if we go back to the job and see the second job, we see there is only one stage. And again, if we expand, you see Spark has read 21 records. Now, this is what Spark did to identify the scheme. So if we go back and refresh our print schema command now, we see Spark has identified the schema correctly. It has put 
the employee ID as integer, department as integer, name as string, and again, that higher date as timestamp. So we understand what is happening in the background. Spark UI gives us a lot of information about it. So if you see, it gives us the information about the number of tasks launched, how many stages are there, and how many jobs. If you remember our previous video where we discussed how Spark divides a particular job into stages and a stage will contain tasks which will be executed in parallel in multiple executors. Now, if we run our action, say df.show, Spark will create one more job. Let's go back and refresh our job tab. Job number four has been created as source string because Spark has already identified the metadata in job two and three, and now it is performing the action in job number four. If we expand this, we see there's only one stage, and we expand the stage, we see there's only one task created, and it has read 20 records, because one record is header and 20 is data. Let's go back. Consider a case if we have a schema. What will happen in that case? So we know Spark proactively goes and reads the metadata. But if the schema is specified, Spark does not need to go and look into the file. Here is the schema for that file. So we can see the columns employee ID, department ID with the correct data type as integer, gender as string, salary as double, hire data as date. Now let's read the data frame again, but this time using scheme. We'll name the data frame as data frame schema and we'll put at spark.read.format, which is for our file, which is CSV. And this time we will mention schema as underscore schema which is our schema string and we will put load as the file path which is the data slash input slash emp dot csv now before i run that let's see the job tab we have only four jobs here right let me run this let's go back and refresh our job tab nothing because this time Spark does not need to go into the file and look for the metadata. We have already supplied this. This is why it is important in production to specify the schema of the file that you are reading. This will help Spark to optimize the code. Else, Spark has to identify the header, read the file to identify the data type, which might cause problem while reading files which is coming from different sources. Let's run an action now, which is show. Awesome. But we see the first row as null. Why is it null? Because our file has a header, but we have not specified it. Let's put it as an option, which is header, and we'll put it as true. And now we, if we run this, again, if we go and refresh, this is because the source string that happened right now. If we run the source string again, awesome. Now we are able to identify the header, and we have all 20 records displayed. If we go back and refresh, we get one more job, which is six, which is the source string. So Spark only launched one job here, not multiple. This is because Spark already knows the metadata through the schema. Now, before we jump into different discussions, let's see what are the options that are available with Spark Read. So if we go into the CSP file for the Spark documentation, you can see a lot of options which are available, which includes the separator, which is comma by default for a CSV file. But if you have a different delimiter, for example, a vertical pipe, you can specify that option using SCP. Again, you can specify the quote header as false, which is by default, but we are specifying as true because we want Spark to identify the header. Again, if you see the info schema is false. Similarly, there are a lot of options available here. You can look into these options, but the most important here is the mode. Mode is very much useful to handle bad records. When I say bad records, it means the records which does not confine your schema. We need to specify schema in order to use mode. You cannot use mode using info schema. You need to apply schema while using mode. The default mode which Spark provides for reading CSV file is permissive. There are two more modes available which are drop malformed and fail fast. We'll see all three one by one now. Now, the first mode, which is the default one, is the permissive. Permissive means it will allow Spark to put the error record or the bad record into a different column, which is the default column that Spark uses is underscore corrupt record. Now you can specify that corrupt record column in the schema to see the data, which is bad. So I have a different file called EMP new, which has some bad records. Now, if you see the salary column, which is a double column, I have a string called low here. Again, for higher date, I have a data which says no date in place of a correct date. We'll read this file and we will see how Spark behaves with different mode. 
So we will see how the permissive works. Before we do that, let's bring our schema, which is now let's write our data frame, which is data frame. I'll put it as p, which is permissive. We'll write spa dot read dot format, which is CSV, and we will force the schema, which is schema, and we will write it as underscore schema. Now we will put option. First is the header, which is option. Since our file has the header, we'll write header and which is true. Now we will load the file, which is data slash input. Now we'll read the EMP new CSV file. Let's see the schema first. We'll write DAP dot print schema. Awesome. It read our schema, right? Now if I go and see the data, so I'll write df underscore p dot show nice but if you see now it has not rejected the records rather it has put null for the corrupt values if you remember it was low for the salary and there was no date for the higher date so it has put as null now how do we identify which all records are corrupt for example the record number 11 and the record number 7 are corrupt because we have corrupt data for salary and date so to do that spark provides a metadata column which is corrupt record and the data type is string. Now this column is an inbuilt column that Spark provides for the corrupt data in permissive mode. Let's run the cells. We have the column which holds the corrupt record here. Let's run the so. Now if you see this for the corrupt data we have corrupt record populated but for all other records we have the value as null. So you know which all records are corrupt. In case you want to filter out the record you just need to put where corrupt underscore corrupt record is not null. This is to find out all the records which are corrupt. If we run this, we get two records. Now, if we put it as null, we get all the records which are correct. So, is it mandatory to put the column name as corrupt record? No. Spark provides you with an option to handle the corrupt record column, which is called column name of the corrupt record. You can specify this in the option and change the column name. Let's do this. I'll copy this option. I'll go back to my code and I'll just change and I'll just put option. I'll name the column as bad record. And I'll similarly change my schema as bad record. Let's run this. Our schema has the bad record column now. Let's run this. I'll remove this filter condition and run this so. Now you see the column name has changed to bad record. This is how we can use the permissive mode in order to work with our files without failing. Now there are two more modes available. The first is drop malcom. We can write df underscore m. This is for our drop malcom. We'll use spark dot read dot format and we see the schema first this is again the seven columns that we have in the file let's see the data Okay, we have the corrupt records here. You, see, you can see the null values in salary and higher date. Let's specify the mode. To do that, we'll write option and we'll put mode as drop malformed and we'll rerun this. Nothing is changed in the print schema. Let's run the so now. If you see, we don't have the record number 7 here and the record number 11 here because drop malformed drop the records which are malformed, which are bad records. So in case you want to drop the records which are bad records, you can use the drop malform as the mode. Now, what is fail first? Now, if you have seen in both the cases, our job ran fine. We were able to see the data. Our job did not fail. So we can specify one more mode, which fails the data if our data does not confine with our schema. Let's put our schema here. We'll copy this from the top. It's the same schema that we are going to use, but this time the mode is going to fail fast. Now, if we run this, nothing happens. Let's see the schema. Okay, same schema. Let's view the data. 
we'll write df underscore m dot show. Now we know when whenever we trigger the action, it actually creates the job and Spark basically does the lazy evaluation. Let's run this. You see now this time it has failed because fail fast ensures if the data does not confine with the schema, it will fail the job. So we have seen three modes. First is the permissive, which is the default mode. For permissive, you don't need to specify the option mode as permissive. It is by default. The second one is the drop malform, which basically drops the record. And the third one is the fail fast. It fails the job as soon as a bad record is hit. Now, you can find out the use cases in a production scenario. In case you want to filter out the bad records into a different file, you can use the permissive mode. In case you want to drop the bad records, you can use the drop malform. In case you want to fail your job, consider there is payment data coming in. Payment data is very much important. You cannot drop the record or you cannot do your analysis with few of the records filtering out the bad records. It's not wise. In that case, you can use fail fast to fail your job immediately as soon as a bad record is hit. Time for the bonus step. Now, if you have seen, we are writing options again and again. What if we have to write multiple options? There is one more option available, which is you write a dictionary as underscore options, putting all the options that is necessary. So consider we want to use the header as true. We want to infer the schema as true. And we have specified the mode as permissive. Now, in this case, if we want to read the data frame, we can use the options method and we can expand our dictionary to be used for all the options available. Let's run this. If we run this so, you see the data is printed correctly. This was all for today. I hope you have learned a lot of new things today. Today we covered how to use Spark UI to understand what is happening in the background. We have seen how to read CSV files, what are the modes available, and what are different options available with CSV files. From the next videos, we'll start looking into different type of sources that are available to read using Spark. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.